Welcome back to Live in Our Vision. I'm Brian. And I'm Michelle. And we are celebrating our six month anniversary. Yes, since you heard it right. Anniversary. Since, since we went full time. Well, we've tried to make this video. What is this, the third or fourth time now? <laughs> I don't know. We started off at... More than one. <laughs> yeah. When we were at Pismo Beach, we were on the sand dunes. Oh, here we are. It was so windy. We tried the next day. Then we walked and we thought that we found this little cubby hole. And we started shooting the video and then all of a sudden I started getting sand blasted and getting in my eyes and ears. Apologize, we got sand blowing in our eyes. We're in the Sahara Desert. Got back home, I had sand caked inside my... I had it stuck to my lip gloss. <laughs> And we tried a third time, we got our chairs, and we were sitting there and the chairs were sinking in <laughs> and we were falling back. Sink your front feet in. Now just, here we are. Yeah. Like, let's just do it inside. Yeah. In our home. Our channel is all about full-time RV living and we are keeping it real. There is no sugar coating here. If sometimes our videos seem to express a lot of, oh, this is great, this is great, that's because it is. If it isn't, we're gonna tell you. If it is, we're gonna tell you. We've had a lot of ups and a few downs along the way. Such is life, That's whatever right. you're doing. So it was a big decision when we first thought about this. It was something that I wanted to do ever since I was a little kid. And I brought the idea to Michelle and of course. And I thought he was cuckoo crazy. <laughs> cuckoo crazy. Well, you know. <laughs> So I started watching some YouTube channels and um, some other full-time RVers uh, from families to single people to couples um, from ages in their 20s all the way up into their, I believe, 70s. But um, there was a few channels that really gave some good information. So. I uh, told Michelle about that and asked her if she'd want to watch it just to see what she thought and she did and she started gaining interest to the point where I still remember one night where she looked at me and started asking questions and I was like oh mm -hmm. she may be getting interested here so she did and there it started we started selling all of our stuff, put our house on the market. Six months later, we were on the road pulling a little U-Haul. Behind our sunny Sonata. <laughs> <laughs> all the way to Dallas, Texas to pick up our motorhome. I'm gonna stop right there and talk about the emotions to that because yeah. there was a lot of emotions, ups and downs with the whole thing because it's very stressful. Right. Not only are you changing your lifestyle and... Big time, because you obviously can't take your whole household of things. We sold a lot, gave away a lot, and we put our mementos and whatever we didn't sell in storage, and then whatever we wanted to take with us on the road, we put in the little U-Haul. But that's only part of it. The rest is the emotions of leaving. Family and yeah. family, friends, our neighborhood. We had just purchased our home new three years prior and we absolutely love this house. So it was a big decision for yeah. us. Um, yeah. We really loved the house, we loved our neighbors. neighbors. Just the life there was, uh, just seemed a little empty even though you know we had really good neighbors that we really liked. Um, we would go on a vacation, we get back and be kind of depressed. <laughs> to that same life, you know. Michelle would go to work. I was working from home mostly. I don't know, it was just a little empty there. There's always that fear of, yeah, you can wait and do this when you retire, but we had experienced so many um, friends and family that had health issues or passed, and I don't know, it just kind of scares you. Like, you know, tomorrow isn't promised. And Yeah, and I think plus the neighborhood that we lived in was a lot of yeah. the retired yeah, couples retired. and people were passing away. It kind of hit our emotions. Yeah. In fact, we learned that another one of our neighbors is such a sweetest lady had uh, passed after we left and mm -hmm. nobody expected it with her. But anyway, um, the family, um, we were pretty busy there and so was family members. Right. They are everywhere. We had uh, Michelle's mom, Didn't uh, she lived about four hours away. Uh, my dad was right there in the same town, but 
We didn't get to see each other a lot. I'd see him, actually, I'd see him once a week. Coffee for time. About, <laughs> we would meet for 30 minutes or so. And uh, that was pretty much it. So it wasn't a lot of quality time, really. My son lived there in the same town. He had a very busy lifestyle with his family. So I didn't really get to do a lot with him either. Um, they were always busy. They got they were very involved. Her granddaughter, of course, she has other grandparents too. Um, and and that's hard. Even though we did get that time, even if it was once a month, once every two months or something, we do miss that. Mm -hmm. But the exciting thing about this, we started making these videos, and all of our family gets to watch them. Uh, I know Michelle's mom really yeah. enjoys it. Uh, my dad called me. He doesn't have internet or anything, but my stepbrother had showed him, and oh, he called, and he was so excited. Um, <laughs> and your mom was, is, has seen with some my sister, with your sister, yeah. yeah. And our granddaughter, yeah. uh, it was so cute. My son sent a video of her one day, and she was standing up in front of the TV, playing, pretending like she was on YouTube. And you should subscribe because <laughs> it was cute. That was really it cute. It was very cute. It documents your life. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we like about the YouTube part of it. Those of you that don't know, I quit my work and the YouTube thing is what I do full time. Michelle, her company was gracious enough to let her work on Remotely. the road. And yeah. she's the first person with her company in her position. In my, yeah, in my position. To do this. And it's been working out great. Yeah. It's been working out really well. I mean, I still miss the actual working with my team there, mm -hmm. being there. I miss them, but I can um, see them through yeah. our, uh, we do Zoom meetings a lot and I am a lot, uh, yeah. so I can Quite communicate with them, but you yeah. know, still miss them. Is it hard for us when we're working here together? Not at all, no. because we're both so into our work yeah. that we hardly ever talk during I know. the day. A couple hours can go by and we wouldn't even have said two words to each other. <laughs> Pretty much the only time is, Ready for lunch? Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> I sit here for my desk. She's back here, of course, but it works out really yeah. well. And um, you have to be dedicated uh, yeah. to do that yeah. and uh, not be tempted to go somewhere else. And yeah, not on a one, beautiful day. <laughs> yeah, not, and not one time have we done that. No, we, uh, uh -uh. no. Stuck with our work. Yeah. And, There's been many a times seen people walk by, you know, yeah. beach towel in hand on the way to the <laughs> pool and it's like, oh, actually it's nice to see that. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want a workspace where you can actually at least see that yeah. when you're working? Yeah. It doesn't bother me any. It's, it's, it's kind of uplifting uh, spiritually. Yeah. It's much better than sitting in a cubicle. Or even at home, when I have my own office at home and staring yeah. at that, you know, it's kind of boring. You know, <laughs> just knowing that Michelle's back here yeah. helps. Or yeah. we leave the TV on just for some noise. Some, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And we don't watch it, we just leave it on for noise. Yeah. That's it. It helps sometimes. A lot sometimes of times. we have to shut it off. I'll just listen to my music on my phone, though. So. Yeah. So we went to Dallas. We had to have a few things fixed while we were there in Dallas. They have full hookups. Mm -hmm. So that was our first camping yeah, experience. Yeah, we stayed there. a week. A little it was over a week, a week, right? I think it was a little over oh, a week. Oh, yeah. From there, we hit a 22, 24 hour trip all the way to Palm Springs, California. Yeah, our maiden voyage. We broke it up into two days. Because, this is the first time yeah. I'd ever driven a motorhome and she was as nervous as I'll get out. Yeah. We stayed at two Walmarts and uh, worked out great. Yeah. Full ride, that's really easy to dry camp. Right. Um, one was in Abilene, Texas and the other one was in Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona yeah. Good experiences in both. So. Yeah, pull over. There's other people there with RVs that yeah. are staying the night as well. We didn't even have to take uh, the car off. Or mm -mm. Sunny, I mean, not the car. It's <laughs> Sunny. Off the dolly, dilly. That dreaded dolly. That's coming soon. Yeah. We'll tell you about that here yeah. in a little bit. Poor dilly. Yeah. We made it to Palm Springs. So we were there a total of, um, what, from December to the end of February. Yeah. So the weather this past year was kind of up and down. Um, 
obviously better than if we would have still been in the Midwest, but um, <laughs> yeah. there was a lot of cooler days than and rain than what they normally experience on a yearly basis. But and we did experience a pretty heavy day of rain to where oh, yeah. in Palm One Springs time. they actually had major flooding. We were fine where we were located in our RV uh, resort, yeah. but they had a horrible flooding there. Somebody that I knew that actually lived in the area said, we just got more rain than we've gotten in the last three years in Total. the area. Total, yeah. in that. In that 24 hour period yeah. or whatever, yeah. A lot of people, like we've watched some of these YouTube channels and we've noticed that a lot of people, they get in and they just want to go, 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 yeah. go. I, we really wouldn't recommend that for one, you're going to use up a lot more gas. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more expensive doing that. Two, you don't really get to take in the areas when you're at. Mm -hmm. We want to kind of slow it down. Right. Stay in the areas that we go, the city areas that we go, and kind of get a feel of the area. Right. That way, not only can we better tell you about the area if you have questions, like if we have a video and we haven't covered anything, just ask us and we'll, we'll answer your question as yeah. best as we can. Um, but also, if we ever decide that we do not want to full-time RV anymore, we're going to have a really good idea of where we want to live in the country because of all the time that we spent in the areas. Yeah. Or we may know <laughs> where we want to stay longer term in an RV. Yeah. Like Either maybe way. we want to do... You know because we've seen um, a lot of people that do that yeah winter in a certain area and summer in a certain area at least we would know mm -hmm. oh you may wonder how we spent so much time in oh palm springs because with our thousand trails membership yeah a thousand trails membership with the add-on with the encore parks the mm -hmm. what's that add-on called the trails collection trails collection mm -hmm. So with our particular membership that we had, we were able to stay a little bit longer than some memberships can. We could stay a maximum of 21 days in mm. a Thousand Trails Park. So Palm Springs, the advantage there is the Thousand Trails Park, and then they have the Encore Park, which is, was only about 10, 15 minute drive, just to a different location. Yeah, it was 10 there. miles down the road. Yeah, so we went back and forth between these two parks for that whole time from the first part mm -hmm. of December to the end of February. We were able to do that for three months back and forth. Um, if you're looking at a Thousand Trails membership, I will tell you this, yeah. and we are not being mm -mm. benefited in any yeah. way by Campground Membership Outlet, but we would really highly, highly recommend, highly recommend yeah. contacting them, yeah. either Kimberly or Chad. Yeah. They're a brother-sister team. We have a link down below in our description so you can find their information there. but. What we found, because we did talk to Thousand Trails, and what you'll find is some of the Thousand Trails people may be new, and it doesn't didn't seem like they really knew 100% about everything. The nice thing about Campground Membership Outlet, she will send you a list of the memberships that they have, and they are resales from right. people that have had them before. So you're gonna pay a lot less, and you still get all the same benefits, and you might get an older plan that's not even sold anymore, which yeah. is how we fell into one. And it has extra perks. Our experience was with Kimberly, and she went way a above, above and, and beyond. beyond. She's and a rock star. 100%. Yes. She would even talk to us late at night. Late at night. If you're thinking about a Thousand Trails membership, you will thank us if you contact Kimberly or Chad. Yeah. I think we can move on to okay. Vegas now, can I we? I think so. All Let's right. go to Vegas. From Palm Springs, we had to go to Las Vegas. We had to have a window replaced on Vinny at the dealership that we purchased Vinny from. They had another new location in Las Vegas. A long story short, we had some other things that needed to get fixed that the dealership never did take care of, nor did they want to take care of. We stayed in Vegas. It was about a couple months there. Yeah. Because, you know, while waiting for the parts, which mm -hmm. took another two weeks for them to repair. So. Yeah, it was kind of nice. It all, you know, one thing that we've learned, every time something bad happens, something good yes. always comes yeah. of it. Always. So try not to get upset when something bad happens, because it will. It will again and again, yeah. <laughs> multiple times. We have a little hummingbird staring at itself, <laughs> squirrel moon. in our mirror. It likes its reflection. <laughs> you know the big chrome mirrors that, on the front of a motorhome? It's just, it keeps coming back to it and looking at itself. It's funny. Hummingbird moment. Yeah. So again, good things always come out of every bad situation. 
we met a couple new friends right. there. Um, they invited us over for dinner. We learned a few things mm -hmm. from them. They were very helpful to us. Met another couple when we went to stay at the casino park while we were waiting for the repairs and everything. The, oh, uh, that's right. Main yes. Street Station. That's right. Yes. We exchanged information and they invited us when we come through to go to Iowa to stop at their place, which was really sweet. Of yes, them. very. Which leads to the community. We'll talk about that in yeah. a minute. The moral of the story <laughs> is something good always comes of something bad. And that's just part of this life. Things happen as they do anywhere you live, at the mm -hmm. house or whatever, but they, a little more so with a motorhome or a RV, fifth wheel, whatever you have. But it's worth it. It is worth it. So while we had that long moment in Vegas, longer than we anticipated, uh, we took advantage of some of the area things to do and we went to the Valley of Fire State Park, went to a Pioneer Saloon that was, what, about 20 to 30 minute drive. That was really neat. Yeah, went to a uh, mine. To um, Chattuck Up Mine. Tour. Oh, good. Yeah, took a tour of that. Saw some art sculptures out in the middle of the desert called the Seven Magic Mountains. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was neat. Yeah, and then went to the Grand Canyon West Rim, which is only about a two hour drive from Vegas as well. So we had a good time there. There was a lot of good things that yeah. came of that whole thing. Yeah. What's next? From Vegas, we went back to California, but yeah. not to Palm Springs. We, yeah. Yeah, we decided we're going to go back to California where we left off because our original plan was to go up California coast because neither one of us has been any further north of Los Angeles before and just kind of either zigzag our way back to Iowa where our family is or cut across mm, South Dakota, uh, Washington, Wyoming and all that, yeah. Oregon. And because um, <laughs> we've never been, I was kind of going backwards there. So it'd be California, Oregon, Washington, what Wyoming, are the states? You know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Idaho, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't mean to rhyme there. <laughs> That's where we're at now, in California. Yep, but so we, inching up further. Yeah. Yeah, we did a couple weekends in the LA area, hit some beaches, mm -hmm. the view of the Hollywood sign, and oh, the Walk of Fame, and some of those things. Uh, since we work during the week, yes, we wouldn't recommend... Moving a lot. Yeah, moving a lot. Seven days we really wouldn't do it for us. We don't get to do too much during the week. Sometimes, when we're done working, we'll go do something and then I usually come back and I still have to work late. And a lot of that though is, you know, our situation because especially with me, the company I work for, I still have my schedule that I'm required to abide by and that's working Monday through Friday, my 40 hours. So that's one of the reasons why we don't want to move around a lot. We only get the weekends to go have fun. The ups and downs. And there's been some. Yeah. Our first one was in Palm Springs. I went out the door one day and heard this water and looked underneath and water was just pouring out underneath Vinny. Uh, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, come to find out if your water is pouring out underneath, it's the overflow. One of two things is happening. You have a lever to flip up when you want to fill your fresh tank. That valve could go bad and what happens even though it's turned to where it's going to service your faucets inside. It could be bypassing that if that valve is bad and going through the fresh tank. Fresh tank is filling up so much that it starts to overflow. Well that wasn't it. The next thing is, is your water pump. That was what the problem was. The valve in the water pump went bad so I had to change it out. It wasn't too bad of a fix. Somebody told us, oh, that pump's going to cost $300. I got it for 50 bucks <laughs> off Amazon. So I fixed that. What else? The I had to restring blinds. the pleated blinds a few times. Um, we would like to replace those and just go with like the roller type. Day-night. Day-night shades, shades, but you know, a little low on our priority list at the moment. But we would mm -hmm. like to replace those. We did get the shades for the windshield which helps dramatically with mm -hmm. the heat that comes in. The way things happen. Dilly dolly. Dilly dolly, oh my goodness. Do we <laughs> recommend a dolly? No. <laughs> no. Mm. Dollies are probably good for some people. We just bought our car, Sunny, four months prior to leaving on this new excursion of RV life. A dolly may work for some people but um, and we pretty much had to otherwise we were gonna have to trade in our car for a new vehicle that you could pull four down. 
Our car was only six months old and we didn't really want to take a hit on the car by doing that. So we went with the dolly. We wish we would have done the opposite. We hadn't messed with a dolly before. We got uh, the Car Caddy SS and if you don't know how to operate it properly, it could cause damage to your car as it did. Ripped holes on both sides of the bumper right through it. Lesson learned. Ours folds up, which makes it nice. So if you're looking for a dolly, you might uh, talk us into selling it to you. <laughs> it is a brand new dolly. We bought it new in December. Yeah. Yeah. Same time. Because um, we couldn't find a used one and we were in a hurry. Uh, we wanted this one so that it would fold up and take up less space. Um, it works, but we would much rather go four down. So I think we're just about at the point where we're ready to get rid of the car and get something to pull four down and just make life a little easier. Even though that we're gonna sell our dolly and we would gladly sell it to somebody, we don't recommend them just because of what we went through. But if you're somebody that likes the dollies, then there you go. The last place we were at, the slide wouldn't go out. Oh yeah, totally forgot. We were just tearing down, getting ready to leave. Put this slide in, went to hit this slide and nothing. Oh. Not a peep. Heart sunk, I was like, oh no. Check fuses, then I thought, well, I remember relays sometimes get stuck. So I went and tapped on it and told Michelle, try it again. I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't really a fix. No. But, um, we just lucked out. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so we need to get some extra ones when we found out that they're hard to come by. Yeah. So we're going to have to start looking for some to have a spare. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. want to get those as spares and water pump spare. Yeah. We did have some spares. The previous owner left some in here, but when we were at the dealership when we purchased this, they were having issues, issues with, with the, slides. the slides. And they were using our relays that we already had in here that we purchased with the coach that came with it. They didn't even know they were in here, and I told them. I should never told them. Instead of putting new ones on, they took ours and yeah. didn't replenish them. So the other mishap that comes to mind is the co-pilot, not me co-pilot, the co-pilot app. So the co-pilot app that we use that's meant for big rigs, trucks and RVs because it's supposed to tell you how to get safely to your destination and avoiding like low bridges and roads that you don't want to be on. Michelle had uh, the regular maps on hers from Google and we look, we came up to this road and we're looking and we're like, it wants us to go down this road? Really? And we hadn't had any bad experiences with Copilot yet until this time. And this was just a couple weeks ago, three, mm -hmm. almost three weeks ago. Yeah. And since then we had another incident <laughs> where it yeah. tried to take us down the wrong road. This time we knew better. So Copilot, not doing so well. Going back to this first incident, we ended up going down this, it was a, kind of a dirt road, and we couldn't see where it ended up until we turned down it. Once you turn down it, there's no turning back, because it's a dead end. We found that out. Well, it ended up at somebody's house. He was outside, and you come up, he was going to check and see if we could go around this, uh, where it looked like where tractors would go. He said, oh, it's, we drive on that all the time. It's plenty sturdy enough, um, as long as the gate's open. So he went to check to see if the gate was open and it wasn't, it was locked. And it wasn't his, so he couldn't unlock it. We had to take the car off the dolly and unhook the dolly and then kind of back and forth until we could get turned around with Benny and hook the dolly back up. And we weren't very far from the park at that point where Michelle just followed in the car. But another bad thing ended up being yeah. a good thing. I ended up sitting there talking with this guy for a good 30 minutes or so and um, he led us on to some helpful information for, yeah. for some health issues and um, it's just it's amazing try not to get too frustrated when something bad happens yeah. because there's a good chance that it's supposed to happen for a reason probably the what we have found in the six months is this RV community that we are now a part of it's amazing it is the friends that you meet, just the helpfulness that everybody will give you from the minute you pull into the park. Whether you need help with anything or just to say, hey, welcome. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, 
it's been great. The, yeah. And it leads into the community through our YouTube channel. Yeah. The um, visionaries that are a part of our channel now, and we yeah. just are very thankful and appreciative to, to everybody. The one thing I've noticed, it, it's, uh, we, we haven't, I mean, we've met some friends in the neighborhood, especially the last neighborhood yeah. we lived in, but we've never experienced anything like this before. I mean, <laughs> I don't remember a time in my life that I met so many new friends in such a short period of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we're only at these parks for like two yeah. weeks to three weeks, and and a, and a lot of time people are coming and going, so you might run into them as they're on their last week out, you know, yeah. so you don't get a whole lot of time with them, but... The last park we were at, Lisa, was just a sweet lady, oh my um, gosh. just, I don't know what it was, we became yeah. really close to her and her... Um, her daughter and son-in-law. Daughter son -in -law. and son-in-law, Ben and Becky. <laughs> they actually have their own YouTube channel as well, mm -hmm. his and hers vlogs. And then Mike, Mike and, and Robin. Robin. Yeah. And an amazing couple that we met and went to a farmer's uh, market farmer's market and a seafood went, restaurant yeah we're meeting some amazing people and yeah the friendships really mean the world to us they really do and we're gonna quit talking about it right now before we both well get up. emotional so we uh, talked about the thousand trials membership yes we do recommend it um but we do not recommend going directly through thousand trails sorry thousand trails yeah. but it's truth and that's what our channel is about yeah. is the truth. We gotta feed it to you the way it yeah. is. So the other thing we could talk about is since we're on the road full-time and we left our sticks and bricks home, how do we get all our mail? Well we belong to a business that does mail forwarding, America's Mailbox. They're out of South Dakota. They call it a PMB which is supposed to be a personal mailbox. What it stands for some people think oh that's a post office box no nope. it's not <laughs> yes it is <laughs> oh no okay it's not. <laughs> but the mail service through uh, america's mailbox i don't know we don't know whether to recommend it or not because we What's haven't the only one? Yeah, yeah we haven't experienced any others and we have had a few issues but i mean we've gotten our mail we haven't yeah. had any problem with that i guess some of it would be maybe the customer service part of it. But Sometimes you get somebody that really is very helpful. Yeah. About 25-30% of the time. Yeah. And the rest of the time yeah. somebody didn't have their Wheaties or something. <laughs> or coffee. Yeah. Enough coffee that day or something. But, Which so, we have ran into that with <laughs> Thousand Trails too though. Yeah. True. Same thing. Yeah. If we um, call and I have to need help with reservations or something. Some, you know, yeah. It's like you're bothering them. Yeah. Right? And then you'll get somebody on the phone another time that, oh no, yeah. that's what we're here for. Because yeah. you do, you, when you get people like that, you start to feel like you're a bother. And that's that's sad, you know, customer service should not be that way. Yeah. But anyway, so America's Mailbox is what we use for mail forwarding. We just call them and tell them to send us our mail and, and we'll get it. Um, they do the uh, title registrations and licensing on your vehicles as well. They do other things. They can offer insurance and stuff like that as well. But so there's other companies um, that do this very same thing. There's one through Escapees, mm -hmm. and there's one. What's the other one? There's another one in the South other Dakota. One. The big, yeah. There's another one in South Dakota. Well, Escapees goes through South Dakota yeah. or Texas. In Florida. In Florida. Yeah. And we've heard a lot of good things about Escapees, but we just don't we can't recommend them because we haven't used them. yeah at some point I'd like to at least try escapees just yeah so you so we know yeah because we have heard a lot of good things about yeah. them I would say give escapees a try and then uh, the more people trying different things uh, yeah maybe we'll all figure this out together <laughs> which one's the best yeah. what uh, else should we cover uh, how about the connectivity? How do we keep working? I have my own, through my work, Verizon plan that keeps me going. And then she has her own personal phone uh, right? that is through Visible Wireless, which uses the Verizon network. Yeah. Um, that actually has been working out really well. You guys might want to try that. It's yeah. $40 a month. You have truly unlimited data, but you're capped at five gigabyte speed. and we do speed tests all the time, at least I do. I try to keep them honest. And I've noticed that her speeds have been consistent. 
and they're always a little over five between the round six and sometimes even seven so I've been impressed to see that and she's had service pretty much everywhere I mean she has had service everywhere we went except for the drive from Dallas to California there was a stretch Through along the interstate yeah. that was really desolate yeah and she lost service there um, and I still had it on my Verizon phone yeah so you do lose some yeah. spots out in the middle of nowhere. Or maybe in a few mm -hmm. canyony areas if you're going through. Mm -hmm. But the But you can stream you can stream yeah. um, videos and stuff with it fine. It doesn't yeah. buffer. So it's a good option. Yeah. And it's a flat forty dollars, no no other fees on top yeah. of that. It's a fairly new service. New company, yeah. Yeah, you know, I've been pretty happy with them. Ooh, and then our plan was to have one with Verizon and another one with another carrier like AT&T. So I've been playing around with some different companies and trying to figure out, you know, what's the best to use. I got talked into, I couldn't believe it because I thought, I swear I would never go with them Sprint and didn't like that. So I went away from them and I went to try Cricket, yeah. just trying to keep the cost down since it's with AT&T. That didn't work out. I don't know if it was the area or what. But then I heard about this good plan and I said well we need something reliable right now so I went with Verizon and got the the MiFi hotspot and with a phone line and it was forty dollars each with unlimited data it's a good plan that mm -hmm. they have on their MiFi right now we really need to separate plans somehow yeah. here at some point yeah <laughs> so that but we've been lucky yeah um, this where we're at right now is the first time that we're experiencing slow speeds yeah and we just got here so we're gonna try to um, go around the park here just drive around and do some speed tests see if there's a better spot because this is a big park yeah. so that's what we got for the connectivity our reservations we do our reservations uh, in advance mm -hmm. and it's been working out great for us on our plan we can make reservations 120 days out some uh, plans you can only do 60 days out uh, with thousand trails so that gives us a little advantage so that we can go ahead and start planning those out in advance yeah. to make sure we have a spot because we're not stuck to that we can always cancel those uh, we've asked and they said that's perfectly fine you can mm -hmm. cancel as many times as you want and we have <laughs> and call you know just call back if you can't get a reservation just keep calling back that's what we do we don't like to really wing it um, and it hasn't really made us feel pressure that we have to be somewhere not yet anyway because we know that we can cancel if we have yeah. we like an area and we can stay longer we can always change those plans to go along with the thousand trails and the trails collection we have like some backups <laughs> we have memberships to passport america which we have not used a park yet for that that offers discounts off the normal mm -hmm. pricing we have harvest host we did use harvest host one time we forgot about that yeah. when we left thousand trails in las vegas and went to downtown um main street, main street station. station we stayed one night at las vegas national golf club isn't it yeah yeah. But it was really neat. They yeah. had a lot of pictures in there of the Rat Pack. I guess the Rat Pack used to go there a lot. A lot of uh, history there. So yeah. it was really neat to yeah. go in. We went and paid our respects by having lunch there. And um, got to see a lot of uh, interesting history inside. Yeah. But Harvest Host has mostly places either at wineries or golf courses now or farms i think farms, or something like that different areas there's even a i saw a museum a car museum oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, by seattle i believe it was right and they're so. usually just an overnight dry camp for free but you usually pay your respects by helping out something helping like or, either eating at a restaurant of theirs or you know help, if have it's a that glass a, of wine yeah <laughs> buying Some, a bottle of wine yeah something like that to, sometimes you can work in the wineries yeah and help them yeah so we're we kind of want to stay at some more of those yeah it's um, fun. just to experience them and then we are also part of the good sam's good sam's well, we haven't got to use those yet no but we we kind of you know want to use them as backups because uh, especially uh, when we leave 
the state of Washington and our plan to head to, towards the Midwest, there are no thousand trails. The Midwest is pretty empty. Yeah. Why don't people want to go there? I don't know. <laughs> There's RV parks all oh, over. Yeah. Thousand Trails doesn't have any there. Yeah. Not in where we want to go. Yeah. Anyway. We might have to definitely take advantage of some of our other memberships. That, you know, like I said, the Passport America. Yeah. And the... Or we know since we live there in Iowa, we know of some places to camp. Yeah. If we want to. Yeah. To try, um, just it's basically to just try to keep costs down. That's mm -hmm. all. Set up and tear down, that's gotten a lot easier. Yeah. It, uh, the stress levels yeah. went down from where it was in the beginning. Yeah. All those horror stories that you hear, the jokes and that, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's uh, okay. <laughs> you definitely don't want to get distracted, which is why I've learned to um, leave Brian alone to oh, do. Oh, so much better. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot I... of time he's outside doing all of that. And I'm yeah. inside. Um, if it's on a work week, I basically am still inside here working. Um, but if it's on a weekend when we're leaving, I can prepare the inside at least while he's outside doing it. That's Works the nice a lot. thing about me doing it too. Even though I work more hours than Michelle does, I can at least stop when I need to yeah. and do things yeah. and come back, even if I. It means if I'm running behind to get our weekly video out every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., by the way, <laughs> I'll just stay up late. But yeah, I get distracted easily, and then when I get distracted, I lose my concentration, and I start flubbing up on stuff. Yeah, it's getting much easier mm -hmm. for us on both ends. Yeah. We still follow our checklist on our in our iPhone notes. Um, she does. <laughs> but we, we pretty much know now what needs to be done. And she's then, the inspector yeah we just use the checklist she, as the last resort okay before we actually take off did we do this this is like yep okay we're good to go yeah she comes back like okay did you do this uh, <laughs> we would like to say thank big, you thank you to our subscribers your comments your oh we love them helpful information yes. your advice questions hopefully we've been doing a good job of getting back to everybody i think that's about it if there's something that we haven't covered be sure to ask below in the comments section if you haven't already please subscribe to get our weekly videos like i said every saturday morning at 9 a.m central standard time and you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and our website of livinourvision.com. That's right. So I think that'll do it. I think we should call it a day. Bye, it guys. Day. Bye. Careful when you lean back. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm sinking. I know. I know. <laughs> here. I was trying to think of here. <laughs> um, we are... <laughs> Or terrible. <laughs> One thing when you hit your 50s is your memory goes. Where are we? <laughs> Scared. <laughs> no, you can barely move. I'm getting... See? We're both gonna get... Welcome to our Live in Our Vision channel. To our Live in Our Vision channel? Okay. <laughs> Welcome to our video. We are minute. living our vision. Nope. <laughs> Is this quicksand? Um, what was I saying? Good things come out of bad situations. Oh, yes. Sink your front feet in. Sink them in. Push down. There you go. All right. Okay. I sit on the edge. <laughs> like we're in kindergarten. Can you oh, see us? At the armrest. Don't my... sit on the arm. Hey, that's a... I have sand on my teeth. <laughs> what flavor is that? Grit. Here we are. Well, no, seriously, what is the name of okay. this park? <laughs> Gee, many Christmas. Why can't I think? Ding ding ding. What was the nose? Hit the head. The nail on, on the head. head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you get in your fifties, you can't talk right. You start. Things just go down. Yeah. I... But anyway, it was funny. <laughs>